I'm going to start off with the enemy within, the multitude of voices, the double-mindedness, the deception, the lies, the trickery of the enemy. I know for a fact that the mental state in these times is very damaged. It is very distorted because we live in a world of illusion. God said this whole world is filled with the evil one. And now the evil one, which controls this whole globe that people plug themselves into to try to get the the truth and everybody in this world knows that the news the media that they have been fed throughout their entire existence is deception it's propaganda it's fear inducing it triggers anxiety it brings depression and it truly causes the double mindedness in oneself because naturally our identity is in God and God wants you to live in abundance and to live life in full and God said this whole world is under the control of the evil ones and Satan's characteristics described in the Bible is the father of lies and a lot of people truly believe the enemy is some mystical thing that it truly doesn't exist but you see people who are caught in these never-ending cycles these exhausting thought patterns that beat them down they are succumb and defeated by the voices inside of their head now I was driving on the road and honestly I feel like sometimes God will put me in weird situations that to anybody else, they're like, mm, this could be kind of compromising to my own being. But I know sometimes God will stuff me into places that are quite dark because I do offer the truth. I have the ability to truly wipe that veil off people's eyes to show them their true identity. Now, a lot of people will reject the message because God is not the author of confusion. The enemy is. So they are under literally a state of hypnosis. And I feel like they're run down to where they They've accepted the lies. They know that they're being lied to. But over time, you grow weary. You've exhausted all your options. So you kind of compromise the truth. You know it's not quite the truth. Like the news or all the stuff you watch that's being force fed to you. So a lot of people have settled and they conformed to the world's truth. Now in the Bible, it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. That by testing, you may discern what is the will of God. What is good and acceptable and perfect. And God God also says broad is the path to destruction and you are seeing this now where a lot of individuals are not receptive to the truth due to pride like I have seen many people in my life where I could have went out of my way to plant a seed or to have a conversation but instead they saw the potential that I had and they turned me to an enemy and rejected me to where I had to go my separate ways and now they will probably never come across a person like that because I truly feel like God has people spread across the earth because God said brought us the path to destruction so people have to be set apart so they can you know start reeling and fishing in people to save them because if nobody like that existed everybody would be on this broad path to destruction and now we live in a world where you truly can't get a message across or funnel advice to certain people these people are being brought up to be hyper competitive to be self-righteous to be their own gods but lack the power thereof to lean on one's own understanding they're prideful and they are completely blocked off to where you can't offer different viewpoints and this literally brought to mind this Bible scripture a wicked and adulterous generation demands a sign everybody is looking for the truth everybody knows they're being lied to they're looking for that thing to quench that spiritual thirst inside the spiritual hurt the double-mindedness all these things and this wicked adulterous generation demands a sign but none will be given except the sign of Jonah, who was a prophet, who then left them and went away. You know, I have said my piece to a lot of people. I have opened up and I've just been mocked at. I've been laughed at. Or it was flipped to where it was like some hyper competitive thing where they had to outdo me to where I was their enemy, to where I had to walk away. And I feel like that's what's happening. And now it's just a broad path to destruction. And a lot of people are completely under attack by the enemy. And that's why we're seeing such an antichrist generation a very dark generation, a very wicked generation, because they are under the influence of the evil one who is in control of this world. And now I could have a 24-hour conversation about this world, the principles and the spirits at hand when it comes to the higher authorities. Like in the Bible, it says, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against people. We wrestle against principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places. Because I am a Catholic, 
and no Catholic has ever been elected president. It's apparently necessary for me to state once again, not what kind of church I believe in, for that should be important only to me, but what kind of America I believe in. And some people are not wrestling against this, but they have conformed themselves to this. They have submitted to this system and they wonder why their soul, why their spirit is being torn to shreds and they are riddled with voices. They are riddled with demons. They are riddled with double-mindedness and they're not able to truly tap into their God-given purpose. They can't follow the path that was laid out for them because Satan's job is to steal, kill, destroy. He is a lion who who is looking around to whom he may devour and a lot of people have submitted to that and that's why this generation is getting more wicked because they're becoming more and more broken inside because they are marching behind the system and the system has laid out footprints and these people are plugged in like the matrix they got cords in their back they are getting their truth from the system their identities in the system their beliefs are in the system who they were designed to be is in the system and this system is of the evil one. Now let me just break down a lot of different things about the system. Let me pinpoint some things that are at the top of my mind. Like when it comes to LGBTQT, Pride Month. Pride is what got Satan casted out of heaven. Boom, he's out of heaven. God despises him. He's gone. God absolutely hates arrogance and pride. He hates halty eyes. He hates a person who's puffed up, believes they're their own god, but lacks the power thereof. And a lot of people think there may be power in being one's own controller of their faith. But it really just stems from fear. They're holding on. They're trying to control. They're trying to grab the pieces of their life to force it to something so they can feel secure, so they can feel a sense of safety. But sometimes you have to let go entirely and give it to somebody way more divine than you instead of trying to hold on for your dear life. And anyway, so the Pride Month flag was the covenant made between Noah and God. And the covenant was God's promise that he would never destroy the world with a flood again. That was his promise. And now these people in Pride Month are using this rainbow to mock God with Pride Month, which got Satan casted out of heaven. However, the Bible shows us that the rainbow is used as a symbol for something completely different. Let me read it to you in Genesis chapter 9. I put my rainbow in the cloud and it shall be for a sign of a covenant between me and the earth. And it will be when I bring a cloud over the earth that the rainbow will be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh, and never again shall the water become a flood to destroy all flesh. So we can see that the rainbow is used as a symbol of God's promise that he will never flood the earth again. However, the Bible does speak of a time in where God will judge the earth by fire. Let's take a look in 2 Peter chapter 3. But by his word, the present heavens and the earth are being reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. Did you know that there's a major difference between God's rainbow and the rainbow that the world has claimed? And it's not just that one represents a covenant where God promised never to flood the earth and the other represents pride. If you count, God's rainbow actually has seven different colors, whereas the pride flag only has six. Well, here's what's really crazy about that. The number seven in the Bible actually represents divine completion, fullness, rest, and perfection. And the number six in the Bible represents mankind, the flesh, sin, bondage, and Satan. And there's multiple scriptures in the Bible of how God made a man and a woman. That is just how it's naturally made to be. These people who are giving into these unnatural acts are suffering shame, guilt, depression, anxiety. It's not natural. And these people who are in these acts are definitely feeling the consequences. And I know that because that's what sin is. God has these sins laid out for you to stay away from them because you will get burned these sins are knives to the spirit and i know that with each and every single one of them the more you press into god the more holiness you will feel the more tied to your purpose you will feel the more chains you will break the more freedom you will experience the more detached you will become from the enemy whose job is to steal kill destroy devour the more you press into god the more your true identity will rise to the surface and it won't be dampened 
and or battling against the enemy, the devil, who is a liar. And a lot of us are facing lies inside of our own mind. A lot of us are bogged down and beat down by the voices, by the lies inside of our own mind, the doubts, the fears, anxieties, these things that weigh and hold us down. Like I was driving on the road and I picked up this hitchhiker and I just had a subtle conversation. Just asked him what was going on, what was going on with his issues and his problems. And I was just kind of seeing the devil at work. He said he had a multitude of voices in his head that he couldn't control. So I had a huge, long, drawn out conversation with him and I was kind of seeing the enemy at work. What happens when you rebel from God? You are in complete submission to the enemy and the enemy has free roam on your mind. It says we battle against spiritual hosts. And this generation has rebelled against God, not at their own free will, not because they are doing it on purpose, but because they follow a system that is under control by the evil one that has this very anti-Christ way of going about to where everything they do is to blasphemize God. And I believe it's because Satan got casted out of heaven. It's a real entity that is wicked. We're seeing it at work and he cannot get back into heaven. But what he can do because he's power hungry, he wants power. He wants control, total control. He wants to steal, kill, destroy all of these things. He wants to lead man astray from God and bring him to hell because I believe we are living in the end times and it's speeding up progressively. Like in Jerusalem, they're building the third temple. Like there's so many prophecies in the Bible that are being unfolded in real time and it's actually insane. But this system, everything they do is blasphemizing God. Like I read the Bible and I'm like, wow, everything in this world is the opposite of God's word. It's insane. And God said, if you are a friend of this world, you are an enemy to God because this world is truly against God. And a lot of people are like, oh, well, I dislike God because I have all these issues. I have all these problems in my life. I don't like God. Listen, the reason you have so many problems, the reason you have so many issues, the reason you fall to calamity, the reason you're in so many pitfalls, your life is so hard, you're facing so many storms is because you rejected God and replaced it with Satan. You replaced it with the enemy. God's not just some miracle worker that you call upon once and he's going to fix all your issues. It's a continual relationship. You have to continually seek him out and he will deliver you over time through breakthroughs, breakthrough, 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 because there is a war on your soul. It's a battle of good versus evil. God wants your soul. He wants you to live in abundance. He wants you to live life in full. And the enemy also wants your soul so he can steal, kill, and destroy. And that's why when a lot of people turn to God, the opposition spikes up. And I've seen this multiple times when I have told the truth or kind of helped somebody release that veil from their eyes. They will go on to get bombarded by attacks and they don't realize it. Like I'll hear their stories after they talk to me and they will just be bombarded by the enemy because he wants to jump on that person to suck them back down from the truth that has been given to them. And that happened with me. That's why when I was coming to God, I was going through spiritual warfare. I was going through so many battles and it's because I was breaking through. I was crossing over to the other side where there is no depression. There is no anxiety. There is no double-mindedness, no self-defeating voice inside of the head because when you are with God, you now become a holy person. Demons cannot dwell in a holy temple. Demons cannot swim in the depths of a man who has a connection with God. Like eventually over time, when you break through time and time and time again, you will reach a state to where you will see the truth of this world. And it's so much more worth it. Like a lot of people want to rebel against God because they're truly in a lot of pain and they probably pray to God a couple times. But you have to realize like you got to swim upstream to God. You have to fight for that relationship. You have to seek him praying continually. You have to battle to cross over because this world is under the control of the evil one. So one prayer reaching out to God once in your life while you are bombarded by the system of attacks continually day in and day out. And these spirits spiritual hosts are at work and the enemy is inside of your home. The enemy has doorways into your life. The enemy has most definitely planted seeds in your life. And when you start to spiritually wake up, you will start to face these attacks. But the more you wake up to God, you will start to break through to who you were truly meant to be. So I just highly recommend to the people who are going through a lot of things, because when I was going through trials and tribulations, I would always blame it on God. But you have to realize when you call upon God, there's transformation, there's pruning, there's development that has to take place. Because when you call upon God, you are going to become set apart. God has 
has standards. God has principles. God wants you to be a specific way. He wants you to be set apart. He doesn't want you to be like the world. When you are of this world and you're crossing over to God, yeah, that pride you have, that ego you have, those things that God does not enjoy inside of your personality, inside of your vessel, he will refine you through the furnace. He will test you so he can mold you. And these transformations, these hardships happen to absolutely everybody in the body of Christ. Because when it came to my life, for me to be more connected with God, I had to lose everything. I had to stop idolizing money because money was my God. I idolized money. I put that above God so that connection was not able to be formed. That relationship with God was not a relationship where I could build intimacy because I was reliant on other things. And that's why it's hard for a wealthy man to go to heaven. It's hard for a wealthy man to come to God because money is his security. Money is his God in a sense. He doesn't need a God because things are good. Things are fine. Why do I need God? That's why you see in third world countries, these people have the greatest connections with God because they don't have idols. So you have to realize a lot of people, they go to God for blessings. They want the prosperity gospel. They want to go to God because they have so many issues in their life and they just want the peace. They just want the love. But you call on God. Now he's like, okay, I see the issues you have. You idolize money. That is ruining our connection. You want to be close to me? Let me just get rid of all your money. You have a lust issue. Let me bring one of the worst females inside of your life that just turns you and disgusts you from lust because you realize the dangers of it. Like sometimes God will truly put you in situations that can scar you and turn you in the opposite direction. Like the reason I turned away from lust is because I was overstimulated by someone who was, anyways, I'm not going to go in that experience, but you know what I mean. And let's say if your pride and your ego is unchecked and you feel mighty, well now God needs to humble you. He needs you to go through seasons where you are humbled and sometimes you need to be broken to be humbled. It's like that person who's yapping, talking, talking, and then they finally get punched in the face. And it's like, okay, now they're kind. Now they're nice. Now they're like an enjoyable human being. And that's what God will do sometimes. You're boastful. You're proud. And God's like, all right, you're going to go through some hardship. But on the other side, you will now have sympathy for people. You will now have kindness. You will now be more meek. You will now be more Christ-like. And that process is not as enjoyable as Christians make it seem to be. And that's why a lot of Christians don't have a great relationship with God because they turn away from God when things get hard. But sometimes in those crushing seasons, that is where you can build the greatest connection with God because he is transforming you. He's renewing you. You are becoming a new creation through Christ. When you come to God, it's not going to be peaches and cream, prosperity gospel. When I came to God, I was sleeping outside. My camera equipment got stolen. I had no money for food. I was eating berries off a bush for like a week. My clothes were dirty. I had sores on my feet. I was sleeping in my car. Sun was beaming inside. Like I was humbled upon humbled. I was walking through the flame time and time again to where there was nothing to lean on besides God because it was so hard. And a lot of the times I would just have conversations with God because I'm like, bro, what else do I have going for me? So I would build that intimacy. I would build and I would seek that connection with God. And that's why my connection right now with God is quite strong because I learned to trust him. And this Bible scripture is amazing. It says, we are not the ones who shrink in faith and go to our own destruction, but we turn to God and our souls are saved. You know, a lot of Christians, when things get hard, they don't keep seeking God for deliverance, for breakthrough. They say, oh, this is hard. God's not real. And they turn and they ball up to where the enemy completely consumes them and they start to despise God because they're like, God, why did you do this? Why is this going on? You have to realize the enemy knows that you were building a connection with God. You turned away. So now that enemy is going to triple down and make sure you never go back to God again. There's two forces at play. They both want your soul. One is for some good reasons. The other is for some destructive reasons. But yeah, I highly recommend seeking this relationship and building this intimacy for yourself. Because if you look at this world, it doesn't take a genius. It doesn't take a man of God. It doesn't take some spiritually gifted person to realize this world is wicked and it's progressively getting worse and worse and worse. Like, it's quite obvious. That's why there is a revival in Christianity. Because time and time again, we see what this world stands for. Biden has elected a witch who practices witchcraft to develop elementary schools. She does spirit cooking. She's playing with blood, doing divination, enchantments, and all of these things. And the system is setting the stage. In the Bible, it says, do not do divination. Don't be a part of witchcraft. Don't go to fortune tellers. Don't seek mediums. Because it's 
taking the power away from God and putting it into man. But the system and everything it does, it's seeking to rebel against God and it wants as many people as possible to join them in this process. Now, I don't know why you would want to rebel against God. We read the final chapters. We know who's going to win. And a lot of non-believers think, hey, if God loves me, why doesn't he accept me the way that I am? The reason I sought after God is because I didn't accept who I was. I was fighting with myself. I was hurting. I was depressed. And if God's like, all right, you're broken, you're shattered, you're destroyed, I will accept you as you are and you can just stay that way and nothing's going to change. And therefore, there is no power in my name because I am not fixing you. I am doing nothing for you. So how does that even make sense? The reason we seek God and we build that intimacy is because we realize we desperately need change. We need help. We need fixing. What we're doing isn't working. And God will mold you to his commandments. God will mold you to the way it was intended to be before man came on earth and completely perverted it and rebelled against it because spiritual wickedness took place throughout the history and rebelled against God because some antichrist spirit, some spiritual host, some spiritual wickedness wanted to be its own God and it led man astray. And who you think you are truly is not the original you. It's not your actual identity. You have just been influenced, altered, conditioned by what the system promotes, by what the system wants, by what the system is feeding you. So that false sense of identity that you cling on to and defend, although it's poison and it's killing you and it's clearly not working because you're shattered and you're broken. And I know that if you're not with God, you will perish, not just in the next life, but in this life, there is a process where God will slowly mold you to what he wants you to be. And when you go through that molding process, when you get crushed, when you get the sin beaten out of you, when you get the impurities beaten out of you, you now have clarity. You now have direction. You don't have double mindedness. You know what your purpose is because a lot of plans are in the heart of man, but it's only the Lord that prevails. And it's true when you align your life with the Lord's will and you follow down that path and you let him work on you, he will give you everlasting life. He wants you to live in abundance, to live fully. He has your best intentions. It's like when your iPhone is destroyed and you need it to be fixed desperately, where do you seek? Where do you go? To the manufacturer because they're going to do the best possible job because they created it. And to a lot of people, the reason the word of God isn't effective and they don't see how real it truly is and what it can do for their life is because they cherry pick and they choose what they want to abide by, what they want to follow in the Bible. But it says, follow the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your mind. Follow all of his commandments and you will see his will manifest in your life. You will see the renewal of your mind. God is not a fool. He created you. He knows your intentions. If you only want to follow the prosperity gospel, but completely ignore putting on the armor of God and that there's a time for peace. There's a time for war. There's a time for love. There's a time for hate. As a Christian, you will be decimated. If you're clinging on to the prosperity, you can't even make it to that season with God who promised you that because you're following something you cherry picked. When it comes to God, you follow every single commandment. You lean towards God. That's when you will see things start to change. You just don't jump in and apply everything to your life. God knows your intentions. He knows you want to seek him out. He knows you're trying and that's a start. Doesn't matter what you have done, what skeletons you have in the closet. We are not here to condemn the world. God can do miraculous things if you continually seek him out. And that's what you see with a lot of Christians. I'm not attacking Christians. I'm just pointing out what I see with my own eyes is they'll cherry pick certain scriptures that please them. God said in the end times people will have itchy ears and they won't be able to tolerate sound doctrine and it's true religion has suffocated God's message and nobody is seeing the true power and what it could do for their life first and foremost because the enemy wants that truth snuffed out so he can have total control that's why Christianity is one of the most attacked religions because it contains the truth it contains the renewal it contains the revolution against the lies that the enemy throws at you the lies of this system because Satan is the father of lies so obviously there has been an attack on the truth since the day it has started because there is an opposing side that wants total control God said this whole world is under the control of the evil one
one. So expect even yourself to attack the truth because you have unclean spirits inside of yourself. You are not of God. So naturally, you will attack the gospel. You will attack the truth because you have demons inside of you. You have spiritual wickedness. You have spiritual hosts inside of you who are controlling your life, who are enslaving you, who are chaining your mind, leaving you in bondage, double-mindedness, all these voices, all the self-destructive, self-defeating talk, all these cycles that repeat themselves, that just lead to destruction all these dead ends that spirit that is inside of you obviously is going to attack the truth because that is your escape that is your freedom that is your spiritual wholeness that is your strength that is the way you can fight the enemy so obviously this system has been attacking christianity since the day it has started because it is true nothing else gets attacked the quran doesn't get attacked and it's because this world is under the control of the evil one. and the evil one wants to enslave everybody because broad is the path to destruction Straight and narrow is the path to salvation. Families are invited to create a vessel to trap the demon that knows them best, perhaps the demon of overthinking, and then participate in a playful ceremony to summon the demon and befriend their demon. Bruh. But yeah, when it comes to God and his word and reading the Bible, don't cherry pick certain parts to please your little itchy ears because you're not going to truly see what God can do for you. Your relationship with God will stop there because he said if you're neither hot or cold, he will spit you out of his mouth because God just wants to know, are you my enemy? Because when I come back, I just want to know that you're my enemy. So it's either you're hot or you're cold. One of the two. So don't cherry pick certain things that appeal to you. Follow it all and you will see the full glory of God take effect in your life. But yeah, that's why a lot of the churches are spiritually dead, first and foremost, because, well, they have been bewitched. The enemy loves to be inside of those places because it is God's truth, and God will completely decimate and shake those places up. And every person who has tried to derail, water down that gospel is going to face the wrath of God because it says, if you lead my people astray, it is better for you to have a millstone wrapped around your neck and thrown into the sea. Now that is a bold statement. God does not want false prophets. God does not want deceiving, seducing spirits leading his people astray. Because on judgment day, you're gonna have some hell to pay. Be the future of the church and of our world is truly in the hands of what Martin Luther King Jr. called the creatively maladjusted. Maybe minorities, sexual and gender minorities, have something to teach the church about dying to self, about new life, about Yeah, that's why you see Christians just getting mopped with the floor. It's because they don't truly abide by everything in the Bible. They cherry pick what they like. They're like, hmm, I like that. That's pretty wise. That's pretty smart. I'll add that to my life. And they undermine the enemy who's a roaring lion waiting to devour. And they're only seeking the prosperity gospel. So yeah, obviously the roaring lion is going to have easy dominion in your life. Because you don't have the discernment. You don't have the spiritual tools to discern what is going on and all of the tactics you just don't have the full truth and the creator wants you to have the full truth so anyway this is the whole video i'll see you guys in the next one how you walk with christ in the world i'm a bit confused now path for the wide road we all get to choose devil is my eye i go pop i'm gonna hit them up rest on the side of this slaying demons boy come pick them up when they don't like what the words say they try to switch it up the unlearned like to take paul out of context they twist them up you know i really get into them scriptures so don't start with me we play kid we don't listen to no Cardi B nah. War with evil rulers, that's the reason why they target me ah. What fellowship does lightness have with daughters? Keep them